guys, that's Dorota Palinska International New Artist and Educator here again and I'm in with Violet today um, so I wanted to show you also uh, different types of the nails as well and we have done for her last time this set, they have been on how many weeks? Four weeks. Four weeks. So they have been on four weeks and that's pretty nice uh, subtle um, baby boomer with some uh, nail art on and today we are going for, we don't know yet what but uh, we, uh, Violet says I can do whatever I want, so I will see how we get on. So, um, yeah, I'm just starting with sanitizing her hands. Just wrap in your hands. And now we can remove the gems, which I think stayed pretty well. So I have used the soak of base gel to secure the gems, and now I'm going to be probably having a trouble to, to remove them, because they stick in so well. <laughs> So I will probably need to file them because they really stick in too well. Yeah. So I don't want to use the e-file for filing the gems, especially the beads, because I find that, that the beads um, kind of almost put the fire on the uh, on the e-file. So I'm just going to yeah. This doesn't work, so I'm just going to file them off with the old file, and this is going to be a hand file, so that's how you would get it, it off. Kind of like an. The filing of the beads always makes your file damage, so I'm always using the oldest possible one. And then the other hand. It's actually a shame to take them off, isn't it? <laughs> so, you can see already the file doesn't want to do the good job because I have damaged it so much by filing the, the bits. So I'm always taking kind of the most bad file I've got so I can just throw it away straight after. And I think I need to even use two of these files, or maybe I manage with this side. So you can see how damaging it is for a file to remove the gems. Uh, but I really don't want to use my e-file. For the gems, sometimes I would, but uh, not for the bits. Because they are metal, they kind of give uh, uh, little fire sparkles. So. I don't want to risk any trouble. Okay, I'm just going to take my safety bead and just remove the color from the snails and any lifting which might be on it. So put the fan on. And I like doing the French, the paint on French gel because I don't need to file, like if we would do um, a French too deep inside, I will have to file quite a lot. But the way I do French, um, I don't have to file as much, which is absolutely awesome for a rebalance. And then we filing off the flowers and it's really a shame to take them off they have been so nice and they have been done with the paint on french gel so i'm just removing the color and checking if there is any liftings so this new um, is a little bit uh, different shape, so I'm trying to kind of uh, make it at the end to still match the the other nails, just so it looks nice and elegant. And you can see that there is a little bit of the lifting as well on this side, so I will need to file away all this lifting. So, 
To file away the lifting, I need to kind of cut it at off, so I will be filing a little bit before the lifting happens, uh, just so I can easily file it off. So just file it, and you can see that I almost get rid of that, and the rest I'm going to hand file. And same on this nail, so just filing away the fringe. So, and then the lifting, which is on the corner. This is very important that we don't uh, left any lifting on the nails when we're doing the rebalance. Okay, and the other hand. See, usually when we're working on the nails like which are a little bit wider in the shape it is quite uh, difficult to find the happy balance in between making the nails look um, nicer and slimmer and the correct structure so I tend to kind of overfile the sides a little bit just to give those kind of more slender look um, but this might resulting in a little bit more lifting on the side uh, than it would on the nails which um, <coughs> which have a really nice and like a long nail bed but I still prefer uh, because those kind of liftings on the sides isn't as like kind of big uh, and it's changing the shape a lot because uh, I don't want to file out the shape of the natural nail too much so you can see the natural nail is kind of like almost an the, almost a, a ring bell shape and uh, it, it's missing a little bit product on the sides but that's the only way how we can kind of get it uh, nice and slender look this is actually so messy Okay, and then filing another. Awesome, so after this part is done and I have finished the filing, I can remove the dust from the client's nails and I can move on into the next step. So your favorite color is purple? Okay. <laughs> So my next step would be to push back the cuticles. So I'm just pushing back the cuticles. Now you don't want to do it too strongly um, because then the clients might feel it painful. So I'm always kind of watching and even pressing, I believe like pressing too strong on your fingers is going to make it sore, isn't it? Uh, so I have to be very careful like when doing um, violet nails because um, uh, pressing too strongly is going to cause her a pain and obviously I don't want to cause any pain to my clients. So I've got a brand new file and you need to itch the edges just so they are not sharp. So I have to remove those edges and I always tend to also check it how, how sharp they are and if I can still feel it a little bit I would file it uh, a little bit more. Okay. Before I start filing I would use a tiny bit of the blue scrub just to dehydrate the nail plate so I don't massage any oils which might be on the nail plate um, during the filing. Okay, and now we need to reshape the nails, so very carefully, especially in those corners, if you go too strong at the angle, um, you might cut the client. So I'm just reshaping the nails and try to lift them up a little bit. So when filing, I'm trying to lift them up a little bit. And then I would blend the gel with the natural nail plate. 
So I'm just doing a couple of the scratches and then nail, this nail actually have been really, really good. So I don't have to do much of the filing. Uh, I will double check with my client uh, if she's happy with the length. Are we keeping the length or a tiny bit shorter? Yeah, it feels comfy for you, yeah? So my lady decided to keep the length and uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm just reshaping the nails rather than shortening it, shortening it. And you can see the shape of the natural nail on this one as well. So I'm just trying to join the natural nail with the gel so we can kind of make them as slim as possible. I'm just reshaping the shape and then I need to blend all that in. <clears throat> with those type of nails, this part is the most crucial part. So when I will be applying the gel, I have to really make sure these places are properly kept in and um, the gel is kind of all joined in with the natural nail. And I will show you that. There is also quite a lot of cuticle work to be done as well. So like this, this nail has some, some reached and it's also a little bit uh, <clears throat> this form. So I need to watch it for those places like so I don't file it, it with the same angle of the file because otherwise I would over file this place. This place is much higher and then I've got dent in here. So it is really important that you change the angles of the file because um, otherwise you would file away too much from, from this side and that's the way how this nail grows. Uh, so you don't want to really damage it. See, normally I grip the fingers quite strong, pushing down the folds, but uh, I know I cannot use as much pressure uh, because it might be painful. I keep lifting the nails up a little bit so they don't grow down too much. And then check the length. And here we've got the lifting, so I need to get rid of this lifting. So I'm just blending it all in, gently touch up on the shape and then try to file away all this lifting I've got in here. So I'm not filing on the lifting, I'm trying to file uh, where the gel is all intact so the lifting kind of can fall off. And you could see it kind of jump out from the nail. Now, it is a natural nail in here, so I have to slow down and be more gentle. I never want to overfile the natural nails. And again, I have joined this place, because uh, you can see the nail grow in a bell shape. So I have joined this place because I want to kind of change the shape of the natural nail with the extensions, just so they look much better. I'm still really happy that we can get, like, on those nails, that we can get uh, four weeks wear, uh, which is pretty good. Okay, I'm just filing the excess of the product. And this isn't a part when I'm perfecting my shape. I would perfect my shape after I put the gel. Uh, so at this part, my main thing is to blend to blend the gel with the natural nail and each the surface of the natural nail, remove any liftings. Okay, and then we've got another hand. So just the same. Correct the shape a little bit. Blend the places which are joining in. This is very important. Same and this one. So you can see that the natural nail kind of tried to grow this way. So for me it's very important that I've got a kind of, once the gel is applied, and I will show you that guys, that I, I'm going to have a kind of neat joining place. I think we will go for some tiny bit of glitter, some freehand painting and uh, uh, all sorts of different things. I've got a couple ideas starting showing up in my head. So normally when um, I'm not doing recording, I've got a little bit, I would say, a little bit more time to think of the design when I'm constantly talking to you guys. 
it becomes more difficult because I need to kind of um, split my mind into two things. One thing is like what I'm talking to you and then the next thing is like what I'm going to do on the client's nails. So it's not an easy task. Uh, but yeah, I can see kind of some purples, baby boomers, some flowers and things like that coming up to my head. And it looks like uh, Violet is pretty happy with this idea. But we'll go maybe for those kind of more pastel dusky colors, so it's not too bright for this mm. time of the year. Yeah. Okay, and then just the thumb. So yeah, from those salon tutorials, I will be kind of guys showing you an everyday life of the nail tech, and we'll be doing a different clients. I don't want to like only pick up like and easy nails and um, where you just slap the product and everything is ready. I will be showing you different things, so um, like different shapes of nails and different uh, length of the natural nails as well, because sometimes we get the clients which got maybe really biting nails and you wonder like how would you apply the, the tips on them or would you better sculpting. So I will be trying to show you all sorts of different um, nail types which I kind of meet in my salon because uh, being honest like most of the time when you've got a client with really beautiful nails they want just a gel polish on top of their natural nails and then the people which got really short natural nails or they really weak and bendy and they cannot grow them uh, that's that's kind of people which want the extensions so I would say 90% of my clients would be having the nails which aren't any easy and um, I, I think when you kind of know how to deal with different types of nail shapes and different different problems, then then you kind of become more experienced nail technician. So I'm really gentle when I'm doing the cuticle work. So some nails are pretty nice and uh, some cuticles are pretty nice and on some I'm going to have a little bit more work. I have put my e-file into the reverse and now I'm just gently filing the other side of the cuticle. Now here, because um, this area is kind of like damaged, pressed with the swelling, uh, I have to be very, very gentle on filing those area. Mm -hmm. And you can also see now once we file the gel, you can also see closer the shape of the natural nail and uh, that is much higher and then lower on this side as well. And it's just because um, it's kind of receives constantly the pressure uh, from the bones, so we have to be very careful with this nail. So I'm just cleaning any nail, um, cuticle from the nail plate at this stage, because that's what I'm going to apply the product. I'm not going to apply the product on the nail folds, I'm going to apply the product on the, on the uh, nail plate. And that's what I want to prepare first. Okay, then the final check just before we put the gel. So I will take my nail file and I will check if there is any shiny places or if there is any places where the gel moved. Yes, the gel can move, so does the acrylic. So if we use too strong movements, uh, we can sometimes create the lifting. Have you been ever in a situation when you was having a little lifting and you started filing and the lifting was just moving and moving and was never ending. Um, that's because of the fractions. I mean, we, we do quite a lot of movements when we're filing. Uh, so I always do the final check in case if there is any kind of lifting which has moved. Um, and this way I find it uh, as a kind of like a double prep. Um, this way I find that the nails last much better because I'm kind of checking after my own work. Okay, and the next hand. And we almost, almost there. Okay, I've got a little white place in here, so I need to file that away. That's it, it's gone. Perfect. So I can remove the dust which is on the nails and we can start with the gel application. So just remove any dust. 
take a blue scrub, which is a nail dehydrator. And when I'm using the blue scrub, I don't go like in the middle because then you miss the sides. So basically you want to go more to the sides and when you're going to the sides, you will touch the middle anyway. Uh, so I'm really concentrating more on the sides. And like a good nail prep is really crucial on, on those on those nails so they last good. So cleaning everything well and then using an extra nail prep. So just applying a nail prep on the entire natural nail. And here where I've got the lifting as well and the other hand perfect thank you so much. So just covering the entire nail plate and then universal air bond. So the universal air bond goes on top of the natural nail as well. So universal air bond and it's air drying so uh, it is going to dry in the air but I never put the gel until it's kind of dries a little bit because uh, then the gel kind of slides and it's much more difficult to to apply it and also it could cause the lifting as well so when you're using any kind of primers make sure they are dry a little bit just so uh, so they don't cause the problems i'm going to use for a change today the soft pink gel so i'm putting it on the side and using my oval gel brush taking it out from the drawer clean it because they always might be a little bit dust even if i uh, clean it after each uh, client i always clean it when i remove it as well because obviously when we're working as a nail technician you know guys that the dust flies for hours and hours so my first scoop is a really nice and thin scoop and look what my brush does it splits at the ends which means it's covering the free edge so with these brushes i'm tapping the free edge okay if i would press gentle and go like this it is not capping the free edge but if i press harder my brush i maybe go show you on the side so if i'm pressing harder my brush is wrapping around the free edge okay so this is a moment when i'm capping the free edge i don't have to like go like this and do this way i can just press it harder with my brush to cap this free edge and then if i need to especially at those edges because we're trying to achieve a much uh, slimmer slender look uh, that's the places which i might give kind of an extra attention just to make sure the nails lasting good also when i have covered the, uh, this nail with the product as well you can see there's a ridge in the middle as well um, so it is very important I do not overfile this ridge. If I would overfile it, it could cause the nail to split all the way down. So it's very, very important like when we're shaping uh, those nails. Uh, splashing the gel everywhere. Okay, so nice and thin layer on this one as well. Press it harder so it's wrapped around the free edge. And by free edge, this is your free edge as well on the sides. It's not only like at the end, it's mainly at the sides. So free edge is any place where the nail is not attached to the uh, to the nail bed. Perfect inside. So I have applied this first layer and this is a kind of like a base layer. Uh, because I can press it harder, it's attached to the nail better as well. And I find it working this way as much uh, more efficient than just like massaging the gel. So definitely a much better, better way. Okay. So nice and thin layer, nice and thin layer, nice and thin layer. And press it harder. Okay, we are going to do exactly the same on the thumb. So nice and thin layer. I'm so gutted, guys. Like yesterday, I have recorded so nice tutorial and it wasn't in focus all the time. So I'm kind of keep checking the camera change. I kind of keep checking the camera because I'm panicking. All the kind of hard work goes to um, no satisfaction as well. Like because obviously I rewatch all those tutorials because uh, I want them to be really nice and good quality. But it's pretty hard from the salon like um, doing a job and talking and recording change so uh, my clients nails oh gosh what i'm doing my clients nails are pretty warm and i'm going to actually my hands are roasting as well agnieszka forgot to switch the heating so it's really warm in here uh, yeah. 
Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, um, it's fine. I, I sometimes keep doing it as well. So what I need to do, guys, is like I need to work one by one because uh, I don't want the gel to to run. Change. So let me do that again. Nice and thin layer. So nice and thin layer. Pressing hard. And then picking up the scoop because I need to move my apex. Oh no, this one. What's happened with the pinky? And then I'm building up my apex again. So this one have been touched and is cured now all over the cuticle. So I'll show you how to tidy up as well. Change. Um, yeah, because we need to obviously remove the product from the cuticle and from the nail. But it's good when the things happen because then at least you know how to deal with the similar situation. So building up my apex again. Gosh, I'm roasting today. <laughs> it's really warm. Change. Okay, and now this nail. So on this nail, I want to kind of improve the shape of it. So first of all, nice and thin layer. And now we need to build up the apex, but also we need to add those extra product to kind of level the snail out a little bit. So I'm applying slightly less on the left side and then more on the right side. Just so when it's filed, it is going to look more even. Change. And doing the same on this nail, so nice and thin layer, making sure the entire nail plate is covered. Pick up the scoop of the gel, and I think this is a kind of a perfect shape as well for those nails, kind of like an oval almond shape, and making them look much nicer. Change. So nice and thin layer. Fill up the sweet gap and then build up the apex. So I'm not distributing the gel too much to the side because by the time we put it to the lamp, by the time we finish the application, if you go too close to the cuticle and too close to the side, the gel is going to flood the cuticle. So you need to always take to the consideration that the gel is going to kind of run a little bit change. And once you understand that, working with the gel becomes much, much easier. So. The product kind of keeps moving itself, so just remember that and then everything seems much easier. Perfect change. And then the thumb. So nice and thin layer. Now I need to make sure this is all joined in together and then later on with the file I'm going to kind of make a nice and smooth transition as well. Pick up the scoop of the product, tiny bit more inside. Perfect. Pick up the scoop of the product to build up my structure again. So I'm more feeling like the back part of it. Change. Perfect. And then doing the same on the thumb. Look how my brush is wrapping around it. And then build up the structure. So it is a pretty decent amount of the product I'm applying on. In the right place, just so it holds the extension, but I don't want too much at the free edge, so that's why I'm brushing it away from my nail. Okay, and then it's a time to cure the nails, so just change. Pick up the scoop of the product, 
So we are going to just uh, perfect change the hands. And now um, that's this hand cure, but you can see it. I need to uh, sort out this needle. So I'm going to show you how to do it as well. At my end up, that we will have to add a tiny bit more product because obviously the product has been touched and it's moved uh, now. So I'm going to use the UV cleanser to remove the inhibition layer and I will show you how to sort this needle out. And I saw I show you on maybe two most difficult needles how to shape them, then finish the rest on my own and then we move on into the design. So what I need to do is obviously because this product has moved into the cuticle, there will be a place where it's lifted. So first of all, oh gosh, I've got UV cleanser. So first of all, what I need to do is I need to cut off the product which is on the nail from the cuticle. So I'm just filing it all. Check how the things looks and I'm almost actually there. That's it. Probably. Okay, and then once I have filed it, I can just pick off the product from the skin. So the products from the skin has came off. And I have also like uh, blended everything around the cuticle area, but obviously I'm missing full, full hole in here now. So what I'm doing quickly is just give a couple scratches to this needle. Because the gel sticks in only to the sticky or a rough surface. Okay, so that's the way how you would tidy up and then take a tiny bit of the gel and apply it, it again. So nice scoop of thin scoop of the gel, brush it all over and then build up the apex again because that's the place where the product have been moved. Okay. So that's how you would sort it. Perfect change. And, uh, and this time the other hand has cured so to don't waste my time I'm just going to file this hand and the other hand is just curing. So tiny bit of the UV cleanser, remove the inhibition layer from the nails. I'm just removing the inhibition layer. And now is the time to shape those nails. So let me check which one is pretty difficult. I think this one is pretty difficult because it's, it's really a ring bell shape. Uh, so I'm going to shape it on this nail. And very important and crucial part for me is this part here. I cannot have a catchy places um, because that's where the trouble is going to start really with this needle. So I'm just blending the sides, making sure they are all joined in, file around the cuticle area. Thin up the free edge a little bit. I don't want too much excess of the product at the free edge. If the free edge is too heavy, it might cause the lifting. And I have explained that in some previous tutorials as well. So just scratch the surface of the entire nail. Okay. Check the free edge if it's nice and smooth and you can see how the shape is starting improving then with the buffer i'm just going to smooth it out not sore okay push back the cuticle and blend everything nicely You can see I have got a white uh, air bubble in there. So usually if I would be applying a top coat, I would just clean it with the blue scrub because it's a dust which is trapped in the, in the hole uh, and then you can get rid of it. So I always use the blue scrub in case if the situation like this happened and then this needle was ready. I'm going to take the other hand and uh, I will show you here a couple more needles how I would file them. Especially this one because it's quite a difficult one as well. And the one which we have just fixed. So nice and straight, nice and straight. Improve the free edge shape. Remove any bulkage of the product. 
which might be on the free edge and try to kind of shape the nails nice so again the sides are very important with this type of the nails like we want to make sure they are all nice and uh, kind of even blended because if there is any rough surface uh, on those sides then the product might start to kind of catch in there and uh, it will become really uh, much weaker uh, compared to the other places then thin out the free edge a little bit so i'm just thinning out the free edge a little bit because uh, i don't want that to be too bulky take a buffer and i quite like to sometimes swap so i could maybe buff it a little bit like i did now i could clean the nail check how this is looking and if this is necessary i could touch it up again with the file and again with the bath buffer like so it sounds like it's a bit more work to it uh, but i find that sometimes it can speed up because i know i know where i am and um, how the nail should look now and then this one will be easy so this one i'm just going to show you on this one as well how do i shape the nail so i need to kind of straighten it up because the nail grows this way and um, i need to just touch it up i need to just touch it up uh, with the file straighten it up and you can see it's already start changing the shape a little bit so just blend this up with those movements i can kind of make it a bit more slender look like much nicer look blend everything around the cuticle area but remember there is a much bigger dip as well so unfortunately this dip is going to kind of showing only at the cuticle area and then we have put more product in here to kind of level it out just so in a case when we will put in like a full color um, the nail tends to look much much better okay i'm just lifting the client nail up a little bit and then scratching the surface like filing the free edge making sure it's all nice and even by lifting it up you can see if the gel has any bumps and uh, it is the easiest way actually to to improve the shape you can also uh, check the client view so to check the client view you would turn the client hand this way and then you know how the nail is looking okay so the final touches i would just go all over like this and then buff with the nail buffer like making sure everything is nicely buff and basically that's this nail nail filed okay so i'm just going to do it on the rest of the nails and come back to you <coughs> So that's the rest of the nails filed now and I'm going to do the cuticle work on those three three nails for you and then we can move on into the design. So basically what I'm doing is just trimming a little bit, not too excessive, especially like on those nails to don't cause any damage. So just a very small amount. And then especially on this nail, you really don't want to overdo it. Not so. Okay, and that's my nails ready for a uh, color. So what I'm doing is take a tiny bit of the blue scrub, just clean everything well, and we can move on into finishing all the nails. <laughs> so doing the same on the other hand, so just a nice and squeaky clean. Perfect, I take your right hand. And on the foil, I'm going to mix some color. So I'm going to use this purple, which is 112 from
from the Neil Perfect. It's actually almost at the end. To create a nice and pastel-y color for a purple baby boomer. Okay, so I've got decent amount. And doing a baby boomer with the gel polish is not a good idea because the sponge is going to absorb quite a lot. So I'm mixing it with the paint on French gel. And just taking a scoop of the paint on French gel and mix it all well. So by mixing it all well, first of all, I'm creating a really nice and pastel-y color. And then secondly, the paint on French gel is so pigmented gel. Uh, that's because of it, like my baby boomer is going to turn out much nicer. I also didn't decide to go for a full color coverage. Um, just because if we kind of doing a more of a like a baby boomer uh, designs on those nails, it takes... Um, away the attention from this part of the nail so i want to really focus at, more at the ends and keep this part nice and clear and pink so i've got some sponges and i'm going to cut it into the smaller pieces take a new form so i've got some new form and then what i like to do is keep the form either on the side um or or somewhere like else just so I can keep cleaning my sponge if you don't clean your sponge they will be fluffy bits and pieces and this is going to show up really in the design so I'm taking the foil away because I find it is taking uh, the focus uh, in the camera and what I'm doing now is just taking a small amount of the product taking a small amount of the product Actually, I need to set up the camera and the focus again. So taking a small amount of the product, let me do the camera. Okay, so I've got the camera back in focus again. So I have just put a small slab of the product. And then taking a sponge, I'm just going to uh, blend that in. Okay, so I'm taking a sponge and into the V-shape, we're going to blend this color. So right on the top is hardly visible at this stage, but that's really what you want. You want just like almost invisible color. If you want to get the blending nice, you need to do this first layer where the product is hardly visible. I, I cannot almost see it with my eyes, not to mention the camera probably doesn't see it either. It's just like on the smallest amount of the product ever. So this is the only way to get a really nice uh, fading results. I'm just doing the same. Okay, hardly any product on it. And I'm not tapping, I'm brushing it away. Then once this part is done, I can take another scoop of the product. Just before curing to save the time. And go around two. So this time I can start tapping more, just so the end starts to be more visible and I've got more product left. Okay, and then I can cure it inside the lamp, so inside. <clears throat> and do exactly the same on this hand. I'll just put it on. Trying to don't move the hand so it doesn't lose the focus. <laughs> and just nicely, gently blend that out. It's a very subtle purple color with the end which is going to be much more pigmented after we put the next layer. Okay, and do the same. So 
So I really just want to get the end a little bit more pigmented. Change. Now the first hand has cured, so I can work on the second layer. And I'm just applying kind of a decent amount of the product at the end. And then with my sponge, which already has some product absorbed, I'm blending it again. Clean the sponge if necessary. And keep blending the product. So the rules kind of works the same if it's a color baby boomer or a white baby boomer. Change just exactly the same. And then blend this one out. So definitely those kind of designs uh, would be the most suitable for for this news, like nice and subtle. And now it depends really how fussy we are. We could finish at this stage or we could just go and do the third layer. Usually the third layer doesn't take me a long time, uh, so I might do it, but I need to wait for my hand to cure. In the meantime, on the piece of foil, but I'm going to keep this foil away from the camera view, I'm going to prepare some paint. So I'm going to use the acrylic paints, light violet. Squeeze them out. Some white. Squeeze it out and deep magenta squeeze it out change your hands so because i had to wait for the product to cure i have saved myself a time by putting the paints on a piece of foil and this final step is just making it even nicer so it doesn't take me long time and I rather to do it on my clients just so the nails looks even prettier. It's kind of more pigmented at the end now. I have to wait for the other hand to cure. So my paints are squeezed out on a piece of foil. And we are going to use my D-Master brush. That's a one stroke brush, and which is absolutely fantastic. So I'm really, uh, really pleased with this one. Now, I think it will be also nice to add a little bit of the diamonds on the nails. So I'm using the Shining Diamonds from the Neo Nails and a tiny bit of it to go on the side, on the places where we're going to put the one stroke. So I'm just kind of like placing them more into the side, kind of random, just so I've got some kind of more of the background, nice and sparkly background for my one stroke. And we are going to do the design on those two nails. Perfect change. Okay, and now I'm going to do exactly the same on this one. So just a tiny bit more at the free edge. Blend that out with the sponge. So basically this third one is just a touches and that's it. I can put this away 
apply a tiny bit of the glitter on those nails too so just a tiny bit of the glitter just so I kind of got, got some nice sparkly background perfect change and it's a time for a top coat so I'm going just to apply the top coat on all of the nails So press harder to cap the free edge. Look, the brush is splitting, kind of wrapping around. Apply the top coat on those nails because for the one stroke I want to buff the nails. So I'm just applying the top coat. And on the thumb, change, doing exactly the same on this hand. And then when the new skewers, we can just buff them and paint a beautiful design. So I'm using a buffer just to buff those nails. Just a couple of the scratches. You don't need to like, I don't know, buff it a long time. It's just really to create a couple of the scratches. Then I can clean the nails and start painting the design. I will show you only on the one part where I picked up design and then I need to get it away from, from the view because it's really taking away the um, focus from the camera. So I'm picking up one side of my brush, the white color, the other side of the brush, the deep magenta mixed with a tiny bit of the purple. Actually, I might even go and mix the purple one with the deep magenta so i will have three colors there we are okay so one side of the brush is the white one and then the other one is the mixed color i'm blending those two colors really well you can see it on the side just so I'm going to have a couple different ones and now I'm going to paint so this is each time how I'm going to pick up the color but I want to keep the foil away on the side because it's taking away the focus there we are so I'm just going to paint those little flowers so basically what I'm doing is I'm just touching uh, with my brush so like pressing harder going to the top and this way I'm creating a really nice sheep petals here is another one so touch 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 and kind of brush it away so this way you can create a really uh, nice like shape petals then I'm mixing my color again, but I'm just going to take a tiny bit uh, a different shade of it and then paint a kind of like a wee 
leaf design so because the brush has an angle I'm just brushing brushing going to the top and then white touch white and then coming down to create my leaf design once you get a hang of the one stroke it's an amazing technique like it, it can create such a stunning designs um, so I really I really love it for my clients uh, you cannot go wrong with the one stroke really um, it takes a patience but Look, I'm almost kind of basically touching the nails only. So it's nothing overly too complicated. Just a little touches of the brush. Okay, going to paint exactly the same on the other hand, like the other nail. Let me try to get the focus again. So touch, touch, going to the top. Press it harder, give it a wee kind of wiggle, but do it all slow. And if it's needed, just lift your hand up. This way you will get a much, much better results. Okay, another one. So touch, touch, going to the top. So the shape of the brush is kind of creating the petals on its own. You don't really have to do much extra, to be honest. But just don't shake your hands too much. I find it like the most difficult part for me when I was learning the one stroke and uh, I was watching lots of videos and, and different things. And I find it the most difficult part for me was when I start shaking my hand. So if you shake your hand too much, that's when the things goes really wrong. And, um, and that's how I couldn't get it right. So this is only a touch going to the top. And touch so you don't need to really necessarily like kind of shake with your hand too much the brush has a sh nice nice shape of the uh, because of the pointy part it, it creates really nice kind of petals on its own then here I'm just going to do a tiny wee one So if it's needed, I would kind of twist my client's hands. Uh, I'm not going to do it on those uh, nails. I will just kind of try to work around with my hand and keep twisting it. Okay, then a little bit different shade of purple. And what I like, because I've got all those different shades, it is much nicer um, if we use a different kind of color. So this petal is really... Look, it's just a touch of the brushes, really. Okay, I can also make the petals more complicated by adding a couple more inside. So I'm just going to do that. And then much smaller petals, which are in between these petals. So much smaller petals. And this is definitely just a wee touch of the brush. So in between, like they really, really tiny. Okay, just a wee tiny touches of the brush. Pick up the paint again. So I've got my foil on the sides. I'm really just not going to go near the camera because it's really losing the focus then. Okay, so just a wee tiny petals inside. Then my next step is just to add a little bit of the darker color inside and a little bit of line. So I'm going to use the deep magenta and lots of water in. So lots of water on my brush. Like I've got some water here, lots of water on my brush. And just deep magenta with the purple inside. Like very watery, very watery to create the middle of the flower. Mm 
Okay, and then we are going to add a couple of the white details, so very watery white, like really nice and watery. And now I can just really add some small detail. Nothing overly too complicated. Maybe a wee couple dots. Now the dots are extremely damaging to your brush. Uh, so when you're painting the dots and it's your good brush, almost don't put any pressure in it. If you do too much pressure, you are going to break the tip and um, you will obviously damage your brush. Okay, so I've got hardly any color on my brush. There is a tiny bit of the white with the water. Okay. So nothing overly too complicated to over the top. And now I'm going to do add a couple more dots. So taking the old brush, I really don't want to damage my nice D-liner brush. And I'm just going to add a couple of the dots. So just to kind of, I don't know, make the design more finished looking and prettier. You could also use the dotting tool as well to create those sweet dots, but because I, I want the dots to be so tiny, that's why I have decided to go for the brush rather than for the, uh, for the dotting tool, because with the dotting tool you would create a much uh, larger petals, so definitely it is better to go for a brush. Perfect. So I need to wait for this uh, hand to dry a little bit and then we can apply the top coat on the finished uh, design. So I'm just going to clean my brush. So I'm using a tiny bit of the water just to clean my brush. Okay, so just clean the brush and then while my right hand is drying, I'm going to, I might actually show you again how I mix the color. So I'm just going to you can see already here how I have been doing it. So that's how I mix my color before I start painting, okay? So this hand is drying and I take the other hand just to give it a couple of the scratches. So a couple of the scratches so we can paint the design as well. Okay, then just clean it. And now it can paint again. So let me catch the focus again. That's it. Okay, so I'm just at the angle, going to the top, and then coming down the way, kind of give it a bigger press. So that's that's the shape of the petal. And I'm not trying to make them all equal and the same because in the natural nothing is exactly the same. So actually, when you when you're using uh, different shapes of the petals and uh, different shades of the colors, I find that you get the most nicer results uh, rather than like doing every single petal to be exactly the same. So some of them are much smaller. Some of them are larger. Okay, and then we leaves on the top. Here I'm going to use a slightly different color as well. So I'm just cleaning my brush. It's good tip as well, guys. Keep it brush nice and squished, like so it's sharp. Uh, definitely again much nicer results so I'm just picking up the paint and mixing the paint really takes a um, pretty decent uh, time uh, but that's like how you get a nice results if you've got your paint picked up right you will get a really good results okay and now we are going to paint on this one So touch, touch, going to the top, 
touch, touch, press it harder. Pick up a tiny bit more paint again. Mix it well. So you really always want to, half of your success is by mixing the paint, okay? So touch, 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 touch. And you can see really that the brush is creating uh, nice strokes. Um, then a tiny one on the top. So, and if you find it that some petal is maybe not as pigmented, um, then you can just touch it up again, okay? And the tiny wee petal, like flower, which we are going to paint on the top. So I'm just going to paint a really nice and tiny wee flower. So wee tiny one. And then the little leaves, just so we don't paint it too, too much in. So nice sweet touch, nice sweet touch. Another wee touch in here. And you can see it, we have created a nice petals. Okay, I'm just touching up another one in here. And because we have created uh, all the design now, I can also do it uh, a little dots as well. So I'm taking my old brush and I'm just going to add a couple of the dots the exactly same way how we have created them before. So I'm just touching, touch, 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 touch. And then touch, 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 touch. It's also really nice if you are going to put the dots like slightly bigger for the first uh, few dots and then much smaller. I'm actually just doing my usual. Really? So. I'm not really a. Okay. And then another couple dots. So touch, touch, touch. And we need to also fill up the middle of the flower. Okay, and the last touches, uh, just to finish this design, is to uh, put this darker color in there. So just a tiny wee, very watery one. So just a tiny wee touches. And then it's good to fill it up just so we've got some nice background kind of for the white dots and this is going to stand out okay so the background and then with my deep liner brush i'm just going to file a, uh, i'm just going to finish it off with some small detail so extremely lots of water in there and then just a wee kind of detail. Don't outline it too heavy. If you outline it too heavy, uh, then it looks too fake. So I'm just really doing those wee touches on some of the petals. I don't want to cover all of it because then it doesn't look nice. Yeah, so basically we have created this nails and violet nails can look nice and pretty again. I'm just going to put those couple of the tiny tiny wee dots and what else I really love about the one stroke is that once you put the top coat over it all the design really pops out and I can show you that as well so once we take a top coat the design is going to pop out and also because we've got this glitter underneath that looks so nice and pretty too so I'm capping the free edge again and you can see it, how nice the design is. Okay, all the colors are standing out much more. And we've got nice and pretty hands again. So I'm just going to cure it, clean it and apply the cuticle oil inside to show you the final results and take a nice picture for a thumbnail. I hope guys you have really enjoyed this um, salon tutorial. So obviously I've got three girls in today, that's why it have been also so much more noisier um, than normally. Uh, but I hope you could still learn quite a lot from these tutorials and as I say I'm planning to kind of recording more and more um, if it will be possible. So 
keep sharing those videos and uh, let me know down in the comments below as well the feedback because um, I would like to really know your opinion uh, about those videos and um, I tend to watch them rewatch them as well and uh, with my last tutorial I find it that if I've got the silver foil um, I'm losing the focus so that's the reason why I didn't uh, have the foil on top and here so the news could be a little bit more in focus because um, obviously I want you to see guys as much as possible but please uh, bear with mine like this is a uh, videos from the salon and the phone goes on and like uh, the clients might pop in they will be louder it's more stressful as well so uh, they, they get kind of more lifestyle videos perfect change your hands so this hand is cooked now and uh, but I think they really useful knowledge it's, it's not the same knowledge like if I would do it on the tips it's more real more life and uh, that's why I keep continuing continuing recording those uh, videos guys for you so I have just cleaned this client hand and applied the cuticle oil into those nails and you can see what a nice transformations we have made I mean the previous nails have been really pretty as well I was ashamed to take them off and they they lasted pretty well, so I'm just gently massage that in, clean everything, and, and that's the look which we have created today. So, glittery hacks, and bye for now!